folks. Hello, Twitch. What's up, Rock God? Hey, Barney. Hey, Ghost. Can you guys hear me okay? I look tired? Well, maybe a little bit. Okay, you can't hear me. What's up, Lone Wolf? No, I'm not, I'm not that tired, um, but I did drive down here first and then run around stuff. And I'm, I'll show you guys the reverse angle. This is the Farpoint Book Fair, you guys remember that. So there's one side. And you run it. Um, but longer if he has to wear the, uh, That's why there are a bunch of people who think he's going to be the captain, you know, when they yeah. come back. I'll bet you not. You have to be in almost every scene. And I don't so I'll take you guys around to introduce you to some of the authors here in a minute. Um, sort of seeing how many people we've got going by. We've had a few people, but we have some of the usual suspects. Met anybody fun? Sure. Um, some people that I already knew. Uh, Aaron Rosenberg, you guys already know. David Mack, I uh, talked to, I interviewed a couple times. I interviewed him on Speculate, and I actually told you guys about this last time, so. Looking sharp, I should wear this for d d stream. Thank you, Logan. You guys like the tie? Usually they gotta catch my guess we'll see. Oh, this is my, uh, I'm yeah, not talking to my phone for no reason, it's my Twitch stream. So this is my Twitch channel, and I'm broadcasting live this book fair. So that's why I'm randomly talking to a phone. So, I just realized I'm sitting next to some poor authors, and they're kind of like, what? Like, I'm like, I just talk to my phone and ignore real people. So... Oh wow. I love it. Makes it. Makes it. Is what goes on here, love? Oh. I'm just crazy, don't worry about it. It's true. You guys have to see this. It's a board with a tutu. It's a board with a tutu, you guys. You will be assimilated and pirouetted. Right? It is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's the best kind of board. That's right. Yeah, I've got um, to to my left. Uh, we have a couple of authors, Star Trek, and then one person who I'll talk to in a minute. It's actually a really interesting book. Um, and then to my right, I have someone who's just got like tons and tons of uh, books, and then others over there. So I've got a lot of them. There are not a lot of cosplayers. There are some cosplayers. Um, I, there was actually a panel today um, that I watched uh, that had on it a cosplayer. Um, and they have a panel tomorrow that's like cosplay as a coping strategy, which is interesting. I have to buy the Imperial version of the TIE. No, this has TIE fighters on it, Barney. See? It's got X-Wings and it's got TIE fighters. So. I got both, Barney. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I drove, it's, uh, I like it, but I drove down in it, um, so I could just go because I was moderating the first panel, and so I got here when I moderated, stayed for another panel, went back, got some food, then came down for this, and so I've been wearing this, like, all the way, like, through the car and everything else, and I'm just kind of like, you can't out-geek me. What's up, Rogan? 
see we've also got some stormtroopers down there. This is Sparta. All right, should I take you? Should I take you guys around to uh, meet some of the authors? Do you want to meet some of the wonderful people here? All right. Hey, nonstop. Also, what's up? All right. Let me reverse the field. Okay. So I'll um, let me start with Joe. Would you like? Are you willing to talk to me a little bit about your book on the channel? Um, okay. Um, this, so, I, my channel is based on story and narrative, and they're used to this. So, it's all this. Like, this is, so. Alright, so, um, this is actually someone who I wanted to talk to. She happened to be next to me because we happen to be next to each other, table mates uh, here. But actually, I wanted to talk to her also because the premise of this book is really interesting. So, this is, sorry, do you mind if I pick up again? So, this is Walking Through Fire. And I saw her actually today on a panel on catharsis, um, which was really, really interesting, actually. So, hi, Sherry, first of all. Thank you. So, tell me a little bit about the book and what it's about and what the catharsis connection was, because I really thought that was interesting. Sure. So, in 2010, my daughter was diagnosed with leukemia. She was two and a half at the time. And obviously, it just completely changed our lives. And we ended up at the emergency room and then the oncology floor at Johns Hopkins. And once you're admitted, like they immediately start the protocol. And we ended up staying for 31 days straight. And then even after that, when you're released, you just have to drive down every day for like five days a week. It's incredibly intensive. Sounds brutal. So I was gone from my other children for uh, a really long time. And um, while I was dealing with all this with my two and a half year old girl, um, my son, who was in first grade, felt very left behind. And um, his, uh, his first grade teacher called me. And I appreciate that she did. Like It was, it was the right thing to do. Um, but she called me because during one of their class exercises, they were supposed to draw a picture and then kind of stretch spell a sentence explaining what the picture was. And he had written, um, I wish I had leukemia so my mom would spend time with me. So brutal. Oh. So obviously that just destroyed me because I couldn't leave my daughter because of all the horrors that were happening. Obviously with what she was going through. But what I did is um, I asked him if I could make a story about him and me. And so that eventually turned into Walking Through Fire, which is about a mother and her son with cancer. And uh, it's, it takes place in Baltimore. <laughs> Johns Hopkins is featured. And some of the adventures are, are just a fantasy way of writing about what we were going through. So, for example, we took a family day trip down to um, Assateague Island, and we saw some horseshoe crabs in, a, in an aquarium. And so later, when I was telling my son a little snippet of our story, um, it was about him and me trying to cross the Chesapeake Bay, and some zombie horseshoe crabs were chasing us. But it was all based on what we had done in real life, and then I made it a fantasy about him and myself. I mean, I only heard the first half of that when I saw the panel, but I was, the chat's reaction is like, damn, ouch, jeez, oh my, yeah, which is my reaction as a parent, I was just like, oh my god. Um, so, would you say, I mean, had you been really interested in fantasy and genre before all of this happened and you were drawing upon that, or did the fantasy interest come from this experience of wanting to tell stories to him? That's a great question. So, um, I grew up reading fantasy and okay. science fiction. Um, I grew up on Anne McCaffrey and her Pern series. Yeah, and sure. I grew up on, like, on that. And um, and then I went to college and tried to get serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah Dismiss yeah. that stuff. <laughs> so, I have a master's in English literature. And um, I taught at University of Maryland. And I tried to come in. I, I taught um, the world mythology class, the introduction to folklore. So, I was trying to, like, do this, like, academic at coming at mythology and who fantasy. does that academic thing you know um, and then I had tried to write a little bit on the side and it wasn't going well so I'd given that up uh, do you have a before you go on I'm sorry do you, do you have a thought as to why you think it wasn't going well 
I'm just curious. I think that rejection is very common, you know, when you start out writing. Oh, sure. And I just, I wasn't able to kind of have a business mindset. Yeah. I took it too personally. Yeah, I asked because this obviously got you over the hump, and it was such a compelling story that I just right. wondered about that. Yeah, so, so I, it's pretty ironic, right, that, that I repeated myself and dumped all of my personal feelings. It's, obviously, I am very you know close to Rachel, who's the main character. Sure. I put my anxiety in there. Yeah. Um, I put all my fears in there, and I also put my hope because ultimately I believe that you just got to keep moving forward. You got to put one step in front of the other, you know, one foot in front of the other, and um, and that's what you got to do. Yeah, that's. I mean, so like I said, it was just. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're all joking me about being an academic. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, but it really is a, it was a super compelling story. So I guess my question is, um, we talked off-air about other possible things you might want to do with sequels and so forth. Um, do you envision yourself going back to that same emotional core for these stories going forward? I mean, maybe with these characters you would, but do you always see yourself tapping into that? Or do you think, I don't know, I'm curious about how you will do other stories when you move out of that really intensely close. Can you transfer some of the emotional intensity to other work, do you think? I think that's a great question. Um, I don't know that I'll ever write anything quite like this again. Sure. Because I wasn't writing for an audience. I wasn't writing character arcs. I wasn't writing, you know, through a formula, you know, by two-thirds of the way through the novel, you know, have this and that. Really writing was, for you and your I son, right? I was writing for myself and yeah. my son. Um, and now that I've been through the publishing process, I feel like, you know, now I'm going to have this other, like, mechanical, you know, elements in my head to yeah. think about. Yeah. Um, but I also think that life is hard. And one of the things that, as writers, as creatives, we tend to be more sensitive to what's going on. Yeah. And we do hold that within ourselves, yeah. within our bodies. Yeah. And so, whatever the story we're telling, I feel like that's part of our gift and our curse, right? We feel things so intensely, right. but that allows us to really inhabit our characters that we've created. Right. So, even if we haven't experienced the exact pain, it's similar to, I didn't write my exact pain into there. Sure. I turned it into a fantasy. Sure. I think that we can take that pain we felt, and that allows us to be more empathetic, and allows us to really imagine deeply the, the pain of what our other characters will go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is, I mean, enormously important. Um, you know, I was thinking about the fact that I, I think I became a vastly better writer when my daughter was born, um, just because I tapped into this sort of emotional core that was there, but it was all, I could write well, but you know, it's not really until you write well and truthfully, you know, emotionally truthfully, that you can kind of get to that next step. Right. Um, it's to like be able that, to do that something. being vulnerable. When you became yeah. a parent, you became you vulnerable. You became vulnerable, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and as you know very well, your world becomes associated with more than just you. And so, you know, um, that's a really cool story. I, I mean, I really, I just, I was one of those things where everybody in the room was kind of like, oh, like when they heard the story. So it's got a real intensity to it. So, all right, so let people know where would they find this and where would they find more about you, website-wise and otherwise. So, Taste of Sherry, S-H-E-R-R-I, okay. .com. Uh, my books are at local booksellers as well as Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the places books are sold, but if you can, support your local. Yes, yes, absolutely do that as well. Um, shout out, oh, what's her Twitter account? At Sherry Woosley, W-O-O-S-L-E-Y. All right, see it? At Sherry Woosley is the Twitter account. Um, and yeah, and who am I talking to? I'm talking to Sherry Cook Woosley. I want to make sure I got the cook part. Um, and I met her, uh, she was doing a panel today and we happen to be table mates, Shadow, at this book fair at Farpoint. Um, and so that's the deal. Um, so yeah, well thank you uh, for talking to us. And I will, I'm gonna go around and touch a few others and then I'll come back again. But um, thank you, it's a really interesting story. And I, I, it sounds like it's an important story too, not just another story, so I'm glad that it's out there. So, thank, thank you very much. All right, guys. Yeah, there it is. Is that right? I think so. Sure. We, okay. That sounds good. Thank you, Shadow. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to a few other folks, too.
Okay. Yeah, I think it's a real. Sorry, I'm gonna move by a few more times. No, you're fine. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry that I am. No, not at all. Large. All right, let's see. So let me walk you down the list and see what we've got. So I've got a bunch of. I thought that story was just really, really interesting. Um, all right, and then we've got this guy. Clearly not an author in clearly. any way whatsoever. Clearly not like it. That's right. And not at all Aaron Rosenberg. Not at all Aaron Rosenberg. <laughs> yeah, ignore the name tag and all the books with my name's on it. That's right. Clearly not. She actually does that. Oh, I know. I know all of it. Chat should know about that as well. Yes. And also Bob Greenberger. Hi, Barb. My name is Greg Wilson, by the way. We've talked on the phone, yes, uh, but not face to face, I don't think, before. Right. But um, So I'm just talking with my Twitch folks. Aaron knows the drill on this. Twitch? Yeah. So, um, can we talk just briefly a little bit about, is this with Crazy 8 also at all that's being done? Yes. So all of this is Crazy 8. Yes. Oh, and, and Glenn Hellman as well. So all of these people. Hello, hello. Yes, oh, that's right. And, Peter, and I actually have a reading with Peter uh, tomorrow, um, so we'll be a part of that as well. Um, you see Queen of Blades behind him? Uh, that is correct. Yes, Queen of Blades. That is correct, Lone Wolf. Um, so Aaron is a uh, wonderful writer. He also does tie-in stuff. And he is also doing the Grey Shade uh, RPG. Um, and uh, yeah, now they're all squeeing at all of you. All right, so so that's good. That's good. We're all, we're all squeeing. Um, do you want to highlight, um, actually, if all three of you, would you mind highlighting something in particular that you would like to focus on that this writing community might be interested in, perhaps? A cup of water is really Huge. Well, I mean, I'm I'm most excited right now about uh, Cross Bones, which is the third book in my. It's really book awesome cover, books. by the way. Thank you. This one just came out like last week, so that's why I'm excited about it. Wow. It's a brand new book. It's anime s epic fantasy. Um, yeah, that's really one, cool. Book two, book three. I remember seeing book one. Right. Um, yeah, I think you had book one here last year, right? I think. Um, no, I think I just missed it here. Maybe it was Origins? Origins. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I knew I recognized that yeah. one. Yeah, this one just came out. Uh, fourth book will be out. Um, <laughs> you already got one that said sold. Anime-esque epic fantasy, sold. Awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, tell, I mean, so, so to give, give the anime-esque pitch. Okay, right? so the premise of this is, um, uh, I don't remember my pitch, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, um, meets Game of Thrones. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon meets Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones, okay. The basic premise is that um, the only magic remaining is ancestor worship in the form of ritualized cannibalism. People literally consume the bones of their ancestors in order to absorb their um, skills, talents, and memories. Okay. And as a result, it is a stagnant empire into which several people enter and are trying to find their own way and make their fortune, and as a result, in the process are uh, changing the empire for the better. Well, I'm getting a lot of woes and excavation points, so that's a good sign. Um, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I know I know we had talked a little bit about it from that first book, yes. but um, but I had not seen these other ones. No, wait, did you not work with Steve on the, on these two? Was this just Steve? Steve was the first one, and then right, so the only reason so Steve's name is still on these because so what happened was that Steve Savile and I came up with the initial concept together. Um, that's sorry, I just said that's metal is bleep. Sorry. <laughs> so your book is metal is bleep. Oh, all right. Well, so so we came up with the initial concept together, and Steve and I worked on a couple other projects together before. And the way that we typically work is that we spend like 72 hours flurrying emails, like thousands of emails back and forth to discuss the ideas. And then once we figured out what we want to do, I collate everything, put it all together, and then I build it into an outline, we bounce that back and forth, and then I write the first draft. And the way that it's, it works between us is I write the first draft because I write faster. And then Steve comes back and does the second, and then I go back in and do the third. What happened with, uh, with Lones of Empire <coughs> is that Steve had conflicting projects, so he ran out of time. Um, so he wasn't able to actually do the second draft, and because the publisher was waiting on it, we had to wind up going with my first draft, and then working directly with the publisher. 
and then Steve was backed up on some more projects. So he and I discussed it. He said, you know what? Really, that's your book and more your project than mine. So he basically handed it all back to me. So this just became your series? So it became my series. Okay. Uh, the actual, the subsequent editions of this don't have his name on it. Um, I see. You know, with, with his full blessing and, you know, with the nice thing. And, you know, but, yeah, and is it a trilogy? And that's, and that's... It is a five book series. Five book series, okay. Yeah, next one comes out in uh, July. Okay. And the final one will be out next year. And Aaron, the only one that I know who writes faster than Aaron is Matt Forbeck, who is not human. So, like, the only... The, Aaron is the fastest human I know that actually writes books. Um, so that's awesome, though. And I mean, some of these chat will recognize from last time uh, the um, Duck Bob Tales uh, and Scattered Earth, and I remember Incursion from last year. Right. This, which I happen to have over on my table as well, that's like all I have left now. Right. Because yeah. I sold a bunch of these last, like last week. Um, so all of that stuff. Um, that must be that you know? No, no, no. There is no person who writes faster than Aaron in human form and Matt in non-human form. It's nothing to do with what I know. No, Brandon Sanderson doesn't write as fast as Matt Forbeck. Brandon Sanderson writes fast, not that fast. And I don't think he writes faster than Aaron either, actually. But he writes real fast, but not that fast. I'm, I'm, I'm up for a duel. Yeah. If he's up for it, I'll do it. It's, it's hope, yeah, it's a battle. So, um, you know. Nothing against Sanderson, but um, so this is this is amazing. All right, let me slide over to Russ and then over to Bob. So, so Russ, tell me like what um, specific thing you want them to focus on of new stuff. I'm sorry, you don't even have to. So that this is um, right. Um, so my name is Greg Wilson. I've known Aaron for a long time, um, and Aaron and I run the Arjuns Library and stuff like that. And I have a Twitch stream which focuses on story and narrative in games and other things. So I have done interviews with Tim Zahn and Aaron and a bunch of other folks. Um, Right. Well, they're open to whatever. Um, okay. So I guess the question is, is there anything in particular fairly new that you'd want to so, concentrate on for them? So okay. Oh, so, so Murder of Montague Falls. So tell me so, a little bit about it. So Murder of Montague Falls, they're three novellas. They're all set in, um, all the protagonists are teenagers. So okay. this is adult fiction. This is myself, Sonny Hat, and Pat Thomas. Three stories, uh, teenagers, all went to the same high school. But they're set in different decades. Oh. So my story, Red Ink, is set in the 1980s. Okay. Where a paper boy witnesses one of his customers on his route get murdered and decides to go after the killer himself. Oh. And the second tale, uh, the Devil's Delinquents, is three knucklehead uh, devil worshippers in the 1990s. Uh, dabbling with the dark arts. Okay. It's just that one of the three has a secret agenda that the other two don't know about. And okay. things go quite bad. Okay. And the third one, it's actually more classic noir, where a, in the 50s, where a sultry high school teacher seduces one of her students in the hopes that he will murder her husband. Wow. And are these are there any sort of familial connections among the three stories or just no. just in the so same high school? They it's all a, went to the same high school. It's a hell of a high school. But in different decades. Yeah. And then in each of the stories they sort of subtly reference the other ones. I see, I see. Yes. Wow. So that's super cool. Alright, so that is Murder of Montague Falls. Yes. And what about so tell me about Genius de Milo. Okay, so Genius, Genius. de Milo, so this is a three book series for okay. Anders Keepers, Genius de Milo, Astro Pools. Okay. Think of it as Dylan's head meets Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay. And the first book posits um, these two knuckle these two knuckleheads are running around Europe and their big worry is can I get the hot girl? Can I make my train to Amsterdam? Okay. I'm hungover to the bug end. Meanwhile, the fate of the universe is hanging in the balance, and they're at the center of it, only they don't know it, but as the reader, you do. So you're in on the joke, and they're not. I see. It's loosely based on a series of bad pattern trips that I took okay. through Europe and New Zealand, okay. set against the quest for a jar that contains the universe's DNA. The universe's DNA, okay. So at the end of the first book, they ultimately, you know, they save the day, but they inadvertently make matters worse. So that in the second book, in Genius to Milo, so you've got the minders of the universe, which are essentially the god characters, and the great disruptor, who's kind of his cosmic foil, are kind of battling for the soul of the earth. And these two guys are sucked into this again, except this time they're traveling all across America. Okay. And they've got to sort of stop these two 
beings from destroying the earth. Several people get two cars And by the time they get to the end and they sort of save the day, once again, they make the situation even worse for themselves because inadvertently they've set off these two massive waves of energy from that universe's DNA that are barreling towards one another. And if they collide, you're going to literally wipe out existence in the next Big Bang. Okay. Which, which uh, ultimately lands with so Which then they what, do a road trip to Mars, basically. So, so Astro Palooza okay. is that celebration of the universe, and while this is going on, these two energy waves are barreling towards one another, but they're up in this realm that creates the universe, but nobody knows this is happening except for these two guys. So this is literally for all the marbles. So each book <laughs> and the characters, every every character gets their own arc within each book and then okay. across the th and across the entire series. That's really funny. And this is Crazy Eight Press, which is um, which has been uh, which again has a big presence at Farpoint every year. Um, well, it's really really cool. Finders Keepers, Genius Tomorrow, and, that, and that's it. Trilogy, and that's so it. That's really, and then I have another book coming out uh, in the fall. So in, loosely in this one, and then then in this book, I introduced a, a private eye character. Okay. Who named Angela Hardwick. And Genius de Milo, it's kind of blink and you miss her. But in, in Astro Palooza, she has a fairly substantial role. And I so love this character. I started writing short stories from her. Okay. First in uh, Love, Murder, Mayhem, and then in a few other the Crazy Eight books. Okay. Now she's getting her first novel, which is coming out in the fall. And this is going to be an ongoing series. Wow. And right now, I'm planning to do at least six books Maybe ten. You really do love this character. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this, is, this is gonna. This is gonna be who I'm gonna be with for a very long time. I actually was. I woke up this morning at three o'clock in the morning. Couldn't sleep. Went down to the basement and I was editing pages at four a.m. this morning <laughs> before I came here because I'm working with the cover designer in about three weeks. Okay. To work out the cover and then it's gonna be uh, published in September. Wow, that's awesome. Yes. So that's super cool. All right. So if they obviously they're going to go to Crazy Eight Press. What is the website again for Crazy Eight? Is it um, CrazyEightPress.com? Just CrazyEightPress.com. Yep. Um, is there a place where they can find out about you specifically? Sure. You can go to RussCultureMural. Okay. So actually, is it on here? Oh, here it is. There you go. There it is. Yeah. All right. So for both this and the YouTube video afterwards, they'll be able to see that. Sure, t tell me about so, that quickly, so, and then I'm going to go over yeah, to Bob too. So Cross Line, this is this is pure space opera. So it posits a modern day space pilot okay. is testing out warp thrusters. If they work, they're going to revolutionize space travel. But for reasons I will not explain, this pilot is forced into a world, ends up in a parallel Earth, where he's sucked into a civil war that he may actually have been destined for from the beginning. But back on our Earth in the early 1950s, a dead broke, uneducated gas attendant from Nowheresville, Texas, tumbleweeds and all, he stumbles into an oil well. He becomes the richest man in the world. Over several decades, he uses that wealth to finance a private space program, which ultimately launches that first pilot, and over the course of the novel, you learn how their two lives intersect. Ah, very cool. Yes. Reminds me of some combination of Farscape, First Contact, yes. and... Uh and something else which I yes, can't remember now. Usually I say, if you like things like uh, Escape from New York. Yeah, Firefly meets Farscape meets Esper Genesis. Yeah, yes, a little bit. Yes, basically, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's very cool. Well, thank yeah. you, Russ. Uh, yes. that, that is good stuff to know, and I'm they're going to get a lot of Crazy 8 <laughs> with the final. But thank you, Russ, very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. All right, so I'm going to slide over. I'll wait because uh, Bob is currently with someone else. I'll jump on down to Glenn. So, actually, um, well, they already know where to find you. <clears throat> But um, give them your website, though, because they know about Crazy 8, but give them your website. So my website is griffinrose.com, G-R-Y-P-H-O-N-R-O-S-E.com. Okay. And remember, folks, this guy's doing the Great Shoot RPG, so he's awesome. Um, and he runs uh, Argens with me, so also uh, the Argens Library with me, uh, and John Helfers, so uh, also awesome. So thank you for the resub, Coven Guy, as well. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to keep sliding over this way. Thanks, sir. All right. Glenn Hallman. Uh, uh, David Gerald and stuff like that. So, okay. Go over there. Thank you very much, Coven. Hey, Coven, I own you a uh, story. I have your story's done. I just need to read it to you, Coven, but it's all done. All right, I'll get back to them later on. 
Peter David is a big Star Trek uh, guy and Star Wars guy and pretty well known author actually and I'm going to be doing a reading with him tomorrow. Um, so, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, really... Also uh, Crazy 8. Yep. Uh, some, someone saw like me tweeting with you, and they're like, wait, oh, is Peter David just being like really nice? I go, oh, no, I actually am like... Thanks, Shatter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, this gentleman I was on a panel with earlier today. Um, so I am talking to my Twitch crew, uh, my Twitch channel, which focuses on story and narrative and stuff like that in games. So uh, Stephen is, a, among other things, a horror writer, and we were talking today uh, on our panel about writing endings, about effective endings. So, um, so tell me a little bit about, um, like, you have a lot of books, but like the coolest new book that you would want to focus on for generally interested in all kinds of reading audience. Okay, uh, well the coolest new book I have out is uh, Slash Viver. And this is uh, basically The Running Man with 80s slashers. Okay. So uh, there's a game show, an 80s style game show, and you have to go up against a Hannibal Lecter type and a okay. Pennywise type and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's, it's real exciting. It was my first collaboration, and uh, I think it went real well. That's very cool. Um, I'm not familiar with Stevie Kopas. What is like? Where where should I know him from? Um, uh, it's a her. Um, oh, sorry. She's also a horror writer. Um, she's done uh, uh, the Breadwinner trilogy. Is her big okay? Big okay. Thing with uh, Bermuda Press. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, very cool. Yeah, read it while listening to John Carpenter. Yes. 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 Exactly right. Um, it's really cool. There's some cool covers on these too. Tell me about Hunter of the Dead. Yeah, Hunter of the Dead is my uh, vampire novel, and it actually takes place in present-day Las Vegas. Okay. So that raises the question: Why do you see a medieval knight on the cover? Uh, which is the same question that the uh, vampire hunters are trying to answer. Uh, and this, the Hunter of the Dead, is kind of like the boogeyman for vampires. He's a knight that appears, and the vampires all get terrified. So everyone's trying to figure out why he showed back up in modern-day Las Vegas. Wow, okay. <laughs> yes, why do we see a medieval knight? Well, now you know, Rogan. Um, figuring out. Although, I guess, if a medieval knight were going to appear in our world, for some reason it feels to me like he'd show up yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. Like, feels up all, all the places to show Worst up. Worst-case scenario, it stays there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we talked a little bit about this. Horror would be your preferred subgenre, so to speak? Yes. Other thing, are there other genres that you like, though, when you're not in horror, um, writing horror specifically? Uh, I love sci-fi, and uh, my, I mentioned earlier, shameless plug, I was nominated for the Splatterpunk Awards, the Extreme Horror Awards, for a book called The Hematophages, and that was actually a sci-fi horror mashup, okay. along the lines of Event Horizon, yeah, 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 okay. or uh, maybe uh, Aliens, or, or maybe the original Aliens. Okay, okay. Um, wow, so then the sci-fi horror connection is yeah. something that you've explored before, basically, yeah. in these it's, things. It's, I really love doing it, uh, because I feel like there's not a ton there, which you would think there was, mm -hmm. but really the blending of space opera and horror is kind of limited to Warhammer 40k, uh, there's a little bit there, yeah. but... Uh, and I was, th I was thinking, I was like, well, you know, maybe Prometheus, and I'm like, well, that's Alien movie. again. <laughs> yeah. But that's all back in the same there's, there's sort of thing. There's a few movies, not a yeah. ton of books. Yeah, 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 that's interesting. Um, so, not, yeah, Event Horizon, yeah. I get, I'm getting big all caps Event Horizon uh, yeah. for stuff like this. Well, this is cool stuff. All right, so if they... Uh, website basically would be... Uh, which one's the best one? I mean, the Amazon.com one? Or? The Amazon.com one. If you can spell my name right, you can find me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you want a problem with like running into other people. Like my name's yeah. Gregory Wilson. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like a serial killer in like you know Michigan and a magician in Florida, and like yeah. so it's, you do uh, not have that problem. Dad, yeah. um, very very cool. Neat. Do you have anything like new that is coming up soon that you're yes. at liberty to talk about? And uh, actually, if if you're moving on to talk to uh, Sherilyn in a few minutes, I was uh, going to talk to her about this. But my next book coming from Grindhouse Press is called The Perfectly Fine House, and we're describing it as a reverse haunted house story. Okay. Because it takes place in a world where ghosts are very commonplace and accepted. So when they find a house that isn't haunted, it's a very strange mystery. That <laughs> That's pretty funny. Just yeah. a normal house. I yes. love it. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you, Shadow, for the link.
they just linked up your page so people could see it on there too. Oh, thanks. Cool. Well, thank you, Steve. I enjoyed the panel today, and um, hopefully we'll have a chance to, I'll see you, I imagine, around over the weekend, yeah. and I'm going to talk to some other folks too. Great. So, thanks, everybody. Thank you. A reverse Ghostbuster. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, all right. Well, he set me up to send me in your direction. So, so all right. So tell me a little bit, because I'm not familiar um, as much with your work. So tell me a little bit about what this book is that's being premiered here. I actually have a couple books that are being premiered here. This is my first fiction book. Okay. Uh, usually I write non-fiction books. We were talking about Ghostbusters. I am a Ghostbuster in the sense that I do paranormal investigations. So I write a book about haunted theaters in North and South Carolina. Very cool. But the other thing that I do is I am a puppeteer. And so I write a book about puppetry arts. Ah, very, very and neat. that's a book that just came out. I am a huge fan of puppetry arts oh, nice. from uh, from Rutledge also. Yes, yeah, someone is singing Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kevin. It's, I don't know what to tell you. Also, hey, I'm from South Carolina. Oh, well, very, very cool. Um, this is, uh, as I mentioned, my Twitch channel has a bunch of people from all over. Um, so, so you study puppetry or are indeed yourself a puppeteer? I am indeed a puppeteer. I actually used to work for the Muppets. Really? Productions on dinosaurs and Christmas Carol. Oh, okay, that's that's awesome. <laughs> um, so, what about now besides writing? Are you still in the field, like doing it regularly I am. and extensively? I, um, I kind of freelance in the field. <laughs> Excuse me. I work with Sir Purr of the Carolina Panthers. Okay. And I also work on the European Tour of Avenue Q. Okay. And I have done quite a few other puppetry things. Oh, very, very cool. That's very neat. I'm reminded of Mary Robin Cole, um, who does both of those things with uh, puppeteering and, and writing. So, um, do you foresee this going to be something that you will you will branch out more into fiction overall? Do you I think? Hope or so. okay. As I said, this is my first fiction book, so I'm hoping to do more down the road. Okay, very cool. Um, where would they find more about you if they wanted to, <laughs> website wise? Excuse me, at Cher Lambeth. Okay. It's my Instagram. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Very, very cool. Thank you. Too young and talented to be a stormtrooper. Well, she doesn't have to. She doesn't have to be accurate in shooting. Just you know, just the puppeteer. Thank you very much for talking to us, Sherilyn. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> ah, I know both of these folks for different reasons. Hello, Eric. Hello, Heather. How are you? Um, I have known both of these folks because I always see them at Farpoint. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm doing the Twitch uh, channel thing right now. Yes. Um, and uh, so I have known um, Eric, and actually I, both of you I met here for the first time some years ago. Is that right? So I generally see both of you at that time. Um, and so I'm curious about what each of you individually, I'll start with Eric, um, tell me about what the newest cool thing is that yes. you're excited about that you want to prep up. Yes, well this, this book here, uh, Supremacy's Bounty, uh, basically uh, the, the genre that I'm writing in is what I've termed Grim Snark. Grim Snark. Yes. So, I actually uh, remember that from last year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. that, that, that's my pitch. Uh, but basically the, the book, I, I described the book as uh, Xena Warrior Princess Meets the Mandalorian. Uh, nice. It's, and anything that meets the Mandalorian is good to me. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's two, uh, two uh, female bounty hunters, kind of a team. One's more of a mechanic. One's, you know, the muscle, yep. essentially. And uh, they get into... Uh, they get involved with, you know, like, human traffickers, and there's, like, some, some drug lords over here, and, like, there's a whole, like, fascist military after them, so it's a lot of problems, but they come through all right. Okay. So, very, very cool. So, yeah, so the, I've got two books in the series. The other one is this one with the, the amazing blurbs. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, which, are, which are great. But uh, basically, each book kind of stands alone. I like the approach that the Marvel Universe took, where you have a shared universe and characters in that universe, but each book is a complete story. It's not like you have to read one to read another. Right. Like, you can see Iron Man and see Thor separately. And then it's the same universe, but two completely different. Right, 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 right. So um, I'm taking that approach with them right now, and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm getting uh, some questions about comparisons to Mike Cole. I mean, probably, oh, right? I love, like, I would I assume. Mike. Yeah, I would Mike's assume. Stuff is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like his his military fantasy that he does uh, with his uh, with like control points starting out. Um, yeah, I would say my stuff is is definitely more. It's it's more on the Star Wars Marvel side where mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more jokes for one thing. My, yeah, <laughs> you know, well, like, definitely. Like I, I try to keep the. 
Uh, actually, the the uh, Supremacy Shadow is available in audio now. And uh, oh, cool. Uh, author or the, the the narrator here, uh, Mark Delgado, who's actually here at uh, Farpoint. And it reminds me, I should introduce you if you're interested in getting audio. Done. Okay. But he did an amazing job on the book. Like he he's like he can do all these voices. Like the only thing I can assume is that like probably narrators meet up and like one of them is destroyed and another the narrator observes their, observes their soul. And that's where all these voices come from. Yeah. Because he did a voice for like every character in the book that was distinct and great. I have a whole voice acting team on my channel yeah. that I'm continually amazed this, by. This 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 yeah, man yeah. Is, is is a voice acting team in one person. Yeah yeah yeah. It's, yeah. it's incredible. So yeah. anyway, he that that one's an audio and he did a great job. So, oh, that's cool. But we should talk about Heather's doll, creepy doll collection. Because <laughs> creepy doll collection is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, I haven't even chased it. But you, I was being haunted by Bob for just a oh, moment. Yeah. Um, but um, no, that's very cool. Thank yeah. you, Eric. I'm, I'm, I, am, I do want to talk to Heather too. But um, that's super cool. So where would they find you? Eric also works for a prominent game company, but we won't talk about that. Yeah, we won't talk here about we're talking about the writing and stuff we're here. Just talking about writing. Just talking about writing stuff. <laughs> so where would I find? Uh, where would we find you? Online, uh, so all, all of my books, I actually have a, a fantasy trilogy uh, as well, and then Loose Circuit is basically just a cyberpunk police procedural. So it's a cool cover too. Yeah. So take any any police procedural, and the only problem is now they're solving brain crimes because everybody has a computer embedded in their head. But all of my work is on Amazon, and uh, Supremacy Shadow is an audio on ACX. On ACX. Yeah. Very cool. And awesome. also, the, I have on uh, my website, uh, which is just uh, Uh It's kind of spelled basically like that with a T on front. Uh, I have the first chapters and three free samples of all my books. So you can check them out. Obviously. Okay. Uh, and I actually have an er, one version of this in not trade paperback, but just like right in the mass market yeah. uh, that you and I exchanged signed copies yeah, of, right. you know, some met. years ago. So yeah. I still have that. So very cool. It'd be a collector's item one day. That's true. No, that's no. true. That's why I'm keeping it in a prominent place. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eric. Thank I appreciate you, it. Um, so, Heather, and again, same deal, but tell me about the premiering book, because you have something new out this year. Yep, so this one just came out last Thursday. It's the second vol volume of the doll collection. So I would describe these as a little bit Twilight Zone, a little bit Tales from the Crypt, a little bit Hitchcock. You read from this last year, didn't I did you? From because the first I remember one. it was creepy. Yes. This is, this is officially creepy, Chad. I can confirm. And these actually get even darker. I don't know what happened, but someone turned off the lights. <laughs> Everyone is just like dolls, horror remotes, yeah. and all that. Not just dolls, but automatons and marionettes. So. Kind of like dolls, no thank you. I know, everyone, not dolls. They're all freaked out by dolls. But they they're really not all creepy. There are some funny ones in here. There okay. are some heartfelt ones. There are a couple that are uh, a little psychological. And, uh, Where did you get this interest, by the way, in dolls? I'm curious. Like, what? I've always loved dolls. Yeah. It's actually the automatons that got me started in writing these. Okay. So I went to a show called Automaticon up in... Morristown, New Jersey. Okay, sure, couple, sure. Couple years I used ago. to live near there, yeah. Yep. And they had this little uh, weekend long exhibit. We had a bunch of artists there, and it was the first time I'd been to the museum, so I went into the Guinness Gallery. Okay. And just started looking, and man, those things talk to you. <laughs> so I walked out of that weekend with four stories and had them written by the wow. end of the week. So, so I have five volumes of these coming out. Uh, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I was going to say, um, that's cool stuff. Ventriloquist dolls scare you the most? Do you have any ventriloquist dolls in here? In the third one, there is a ventriloquist dummy, and typically you see them as the ones who are, you know, the devil whispering into the, the ventriloquist ear saying, you know, off this guy. Well, it's a flipped role, so this dummy's trying to talk his owner out of killing somebody. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. That's neat. Weird, yeah. Doctor Who's Weeping Angels, same category, big nope. Yeah, <laughs> they are they are freaky. Yeah. Um, all right, so if they wanted to find more, and obviously you have many books I know, um, but if they wanted to find more about either this or you, where would they go? You can go to my website, which is heatherehutzel.com. Okay. Um, the books are all listed on there. You can purchase them by contacting me, just email me. Okay. Um, or you can go to the printer, which is lunum.com. Okay. And they're all there also. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, Heather. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Cool. So, we're going over to different groups and stuff like that. Hello. I have not talked to Kelly yet. Hello, Kelly. Hi. So, uh, Aaron says you're awesome, so I'll take that as, as a, as a truth. Aaron knows all things. 
So this is my Twitch channel. I mean, I'm an author over there, but this is my Twitch channel that focuses on story and narrative. So I've been interviewing different people about what they're doing here. So tell me about the cool thing, the coolest new thing, let's say, that you've got up, that you are promoting, talking about, etc. Cool. So uh, at, at heart, I'm a Star Trek author. So right now, I'm writing for the Star Trek Adventures game line. Oh, yeah. Modiphius, right? Modiphius, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So my projects are launching this year, they're not out okay. yet, but that's the, the awesome cool thing that like I get to build on. We do a ton of tabletop, including sponsored on my channel, so that's great. Oh, well, um, you, need to, you need to play Star Trek Adventures because it's good. Yeah, I've heard fun. really many good things about it. So, um, so have you, I guess my question would be, as you're in the process of writing this stuff, I don't know whether you're doing more source book stuff or more adventure type of stuff, um, what is it like trying to do that from a game point of view, but within a large context universe like Star Trek? So, being a fan helps because you have like the background on the universe, but right. there's multiple of us who are collaborating on like shared narratives, and, and so we all kind of mine each other's ideas mm -hmm. and and, and back history and for me it's awesome because I get to plug into you know a fandom in the universe that, that I really love. Yeah, yeah. Game writing is different than like, you know, fiction writing like right. my, my Star Trek Strange New Worlds book because there's no um, you know there's you don't know what the characters are gonna be in a game writing. Yeah. So whereas this I got to write from the perspective of that really passion. So So it's kind of uh, do you imagine yourself staying with the game writing, moving back and forth? What do you figure? Ideally, I'd like to do both fiction and game writing. Um, I, I've done more fiction writing and, and critical essays and that sort of thing. But I'm really loving this game writing. Thing, so we'll see where it we'll goes. We'll see how it goes. Where would they find more about you uh, um, if they're curious? At my website, kellyfitzpatrick.com. Author, teacher, geek. I can't identify with any of that yet. <laughs> Just want you all to know. I don't know any connection to that at all. <laughs> you know, they're all kind of like tied up together. We're all just, right we're all just like modified versions <laughs> of each other. Like I'm a professor, an author, and a geek. Right here. Yep. Same, same, same deal. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll be looking for that because I am interested in second more of that particular Star Trek game world. So, awesome. so thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So. Let's see who else we've got that is interesting. Ah, this gentleman. I was. Ha this is another gentleman I had on that same panel. Hello, Derek. Um, so this is my Twitch channel um, that focuses on story and narrative and games, and I'm sort of talking to various people around here. And this gentleman was also on my panel with a lot of interesting things to say about endings and about the creation of endings. So, um, Derek, tell me a little bit about the coolest new thing that you're promoing here in terms of story or anything else you've got that you want to be talking about. Uh, the coolest new thing. Um, okay, well, thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> the panel was fantastic, by the way. So. Oh, well, you, you guys made it fantastic, so. <laughs> um, the coolest new thing is actually something that I actually do not have here. I have a story that's coming out uh, called, uh, for a book called Badass Moms. Okay. It's, it's all about moms. We have a Kickstarter that is actually active right now to okay. end the month. Are you gonna be here and I have a story um, in that. We're gonna be down and it's from Crazy Eight Press. Okay. Oh, okay. oh it's another Crazy Eight. Another crazy this is basically eight just Crazy Eight Con, basically. Yeah. Like, everybody is yeah, Crazy Eight. Crazy eight. Crazy eight. Good God. This is a um, uh, last year I did a story for oh, Crazy Eight Press called The Third Law, which is like a parallel Earth story. Okay. Um, which was a, I think, an interesting story. Uh, the Badass Moms is edited by Mary Fan, and uh, that Kickstarter is really is a, is a really good Kickstarter. So is it just Kickstarter.com slash Badass Moms? Yes. Chat, can you go find me that? So Kickstarter.com slash Badass Moms. Um, find that. Uh, they're all, all moms are badass. Agree 100%. <laughs> Uh, this is true. I mean, that's that's a true statement. Um, so yeah, go find that chat so we can link it up. Okay. So in the meantime, I know also um, that you had stories in various places uh, yes. as well that are especially on the Star Trek side of things. Yes. Although, so this is the first story I ever professionally I wrote. Um, this was oh my gosh, 2005. Okay. Star Trek: Strange New Worlds Eight. Um, this is a story dealing with uh, the Borg, uh, Captain Picard. Uh, Adam and Janeway, um, this took first place um, for Star Trek Strange New Worlds Anthology. I was uh, very proud and happy to have written this, and this is what started me as a professional writer. Nice. Star Trek Strange New Worlds Anthology. So is it, is it that? Mary that, Dash fans. Slash that is it. That's, it. that's it. Thank you, Rogan. Good stuff. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, so that one is coming out. 
Um, do you expect, is the plan for that Kickstarter that you're going to do just that particular anthology, do you want to do more in those, you know, more of those kinds of stories? That's or you don't an know? excellent question. You'd have to speak to Mary or anyone from Crazy Eight, but I would say speak to Mary about that. Okay. And I think it would determine how well this does. Okay. Um, I know uh, from the responses we're getting so far, we're almost at 50% on the Kickstarter. Okay. And, and you guys launched when? We launched, I think, about a week ago. Okay. So that's, that's pretty, that's yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. So hopefully we can do more. This would be just be like a volume one. Right. And it would be great if we do maybe like every year or every, you know, we're doing like a, right. another and another. How many people in it do you know? How many authors, um, roughly? I think about, I want to say 12 to 15 of us. Okay. Um, if we exceed our Kickstarter amount, then we're looking to get um, Keith DeCandrio. We're looking to get him. I'll be talking more to Keith DeCandrio, who wrote the script for that book, that book right there. That's right. Uh, so you want to speak to him about it. And then if we exceed another amount, then we're looking to get illustrations for every story. Oh, nice. You know, and then I think we're also thinking about doing um, uh, audible or yeah. audi audio for each story. Okay. So. There are other options as the Kickstarter yeah. escalates. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I missed it when you were first describing it. Does this have a genre touch too, or is it just badass moms regardless it's, of genre? It's badass moms. And what basically what happened is when Mary put the, the uh, idea out there, everyone was allowed to pitch. Okay. Um, what kind of badass moms they wanted. Um, there was um, obviously you know different kinds of ideas. So a badass mom superhero, um, detective badass moms. My story personally i take um three badass moms throughout history okay and they are uh, they are related and they pass something down to each other throughout history wow in a very interesting and exciting ways very ways cool. that are unexpected and a reader would certainly not expect okay so that's that's my story and i and uh, i can tell you that this book certainly has something for everyone yeah yeah because it's called badass moms you know, it's, a, it's a mom story and, and it's let me tell you, something for everyone in this. Very cool. That's very good. Um, so, yes, very funny. Yes, Jelinek. <laughs> ha ha. Yes, I know, I know. Um, that's very cool. All right, so if they want to find more about your stuff specifically, where do they go? To find out more about me, just go to my name, Derek Attico or Derek Tyler Attico.com. D E R E K A T T I C O.com. Dot com. And then you can find more about Derek. And as I say, very thoughtful and a lot of interesting things to say on the panel, so I can speak to that. So. And you can always find me on Twitter, which is D Attico, D A T T I C O on Twitter. Okay, on Twitter. Thank, thank you, Derek. Thank I appreciate you. it, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. And then we swing down there. I'm going to swing back here to a gentleman who's totally awake and who I've interviewed here before because I was on the, look at this, see, this is what, I'm going to zoom in on here. So this is David Mack, more than 1.25 million books sold. That is a, that is just a staggering one. <laughs> you folks should know David, not only because uh, David, of course, is a very well-known author and Star Trek author and many other sorts of things, and I did a reading with him of this with him when he was reading this book, and this book is really cool, The Midnight Front, and I interviewed him on Speculate, but also, he plays in my D&D game, so he was in the uh, Tales and Tomes of the Forbidden Library, which, uh, by the way, is, um, I didn't show you that, hold on a second, you should, it's, it's on a very large it's, pile, it's not purpose, it's flat tray. you might already have seen it, actually, but, so it's now out in PDF, and it will be out in about four weeks in print. So, and you folks are, nice. you folks are called out for that as being the originals. So, so yeah, so David was, uh, is the original, one of the original members that got this all started. Um, and now it has become this thing, um, from Alligator Alley. So, um, but anyway, yeah, so this is, this is David. So David, I have talked to you before many times, not just here, but elsewhere, but tell me if there's one, like, particularly cool new thing that you want. Also, I should say a creative consultant for two current Star Trek shows in development. So, but tell me, David, like, what is the coolest new thing that you'd want people to be looking at right now from you? Uh, well, I'd say be looking, uh, be on the lookout for the Shadow Commission coming June 9. Shadow Commission. Coming June 9, 2020. Very cool. It's book three in my Dark Art series from Tour. And is that the cover picture, too? Yeah, it's the cover art. That's a good cover. By Larry Rostick. Yeah. It's a terrific cover. Oh, my God, man. Uh, good the book stuff. is set during the week after the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and it's like three days of the Condor, but with uh, magicians instead of spies. 
and it's uh, basically a black magic thriller conspiracy piece in which nobody knows who to trust. So the tagline for the book is, Trust Will Get Them Killed. Trust Will Get Them Killed. <laughs> That's awesome. The, all of these names are great. Midnight Front, the Iron Codex, the Shadow Commission. I mean, these are all tremendous. Well, you the know, idea is that they play uh, off of historical things. The Midnight Front is a play on the Western Front. Sure, yep. The Iron Codex is a play on the Iron Curtain. Yep. And the Shadow Commission is a play on the Warren Commission, which investigated the Kennedy assassination. The Kennedy assassination. Which is a key plot element of the Shadow Commission. Did you? I was going to ask about that, whether it was actually The connected. Shadow Commission, we will find in the book, is involved in the assassination of John F. Kennedy. You know what I've never asked you about these? These things have also always struck me as being great for some kind of espionage-based role-playing type they thing. They would be fantastic. Um, uh, you know, like Twilight... Twilight... Um, not Twilight Imperium... Uh, Oh god, it's the one that the board game geek loves. Anyway, it's, some, it's something that's related to this that ties across politically and otherwise. But have you ever? Has there ever, ever been any thought about, you know, talking to people about doing some kind no of a? No one has approached me about it. I haven't approached anyone else. But because of the way the magic system is set up, using uh, real Renaissance era black magic as the inspiration. Yep. Uh, but within very strict parameters, strict rules. The demons have very strictly defined abilities and powers that they can grant. The uh, section, the, the, the setup of checks and balances on the way power works and the way it's distributed, would lend itself very well to a role-playing game, uh, a tabletop role-playing game that uh, would, it could be anything from soldiers and mercenaries with black magic, spies with black magic. It could be corporate uh, skullduggery with black magic. Right. It could be politics with black magic. Right. It would lend itself to a variety of forms. And in fact, the original impetus behind the title, uh, series title, Dark Arts, Dark Arts was supposed to apply to both magic as well as to politics, uh, advertising, disinformation, war, uh, and many other subjects. Many things were supposed to be subsumed under the umbrella heading of Dark Arts. Mm -hmm. So the, that was why every book in the series is a different kind of book. Book one is a war epic. Book two is a spy thriller. Book three is going to be a conspiracy thriller. All uh, super cool. I am so stoked for this. Let's do it, Arv. Well, I mean, look. Um, and yes, Shadow, I have talked to David several times, um, actually, about this. We interviewed him for Speculate, Mike Underwood and I, Turbo Tango on Twitch, uh, interviewed um, David about this, actually, I think it was last year or the year before. Um, and as I said, I've been interested in this since we happened to do that reading together at Gen Con, um, and I heard it myself, and I was like, this is awesome. Um, so well, thank you. that's, that's really kind of neat. Um, so those things as well. Is there anything you can talk about on the Star Trek uh, front, besides what I just said about creative consulting. There's Anything really else you can speak nothing about? I'm allowed to tell you that they haven't already... By accident? Like, just like... Oh, huh. I really and wish I could, except... Kirk all, Returns or something. All I can, all I, no, I can't even tell you that. <laughs> I'm not allowed to mention any character names um, under strict non-disclosure. What I can tell you is just the generic phrase, which in this case is completely heartfelt. The kid show that's coming to Nickelodeon from the Hageman Brothers is going to be some of the smartest, best Star Trek you've seen on TV in a long time. And it doesn't matter that they're saying it's aimed at a young audience and it's meant to bring younger viewers into the Star Trek franchise. I think anybody who loves Star Trek, who loves good Star Trek storytelling, who loves the universe that Roddenberry created and loves the ideals that it stands for, is going to love this show. Okay. It's got a lot of brains, it's got a lot of heart, and it's just got a terrific story, and the Hageman brothers are terrific storytellers who put together a really strong room of writers, and from what I've seen of early lookbooks and uh, you know samples of animation styles and art styles, this show is going to be just beautiful. Wow. It's going to be, be gorgeous. It's reminding me a little bit of the animated series that a lot of people did. It really it's was essentially light, their fourth season. You know, it, it was legit. Light, it'll be light years beyond what was possible at okay. the time of the animated series. The animation style is going to be cutting edge. Okay. But most importantly, the storytelling is going to be top ranked. Okay. This is going to rank up there like... Right now, people are talking about how great Picard is. They're going to mention this show in the same breath as Picard. Wow. Are, do you have anything... Are you going to be doing any like scripts or stories? or? I am strictly a creative consultant at this time. I have not been asked to do anything more than that. And I am proud to serve in that capacity. Okay. I have had a lot of input. A lot of my suggestions have found their way to the writer's room. Neat. And have been well received. And uh, I can't say which ideas. Uh, that would be impossible. Sure. 
but I have found the process of collaborating with the Hagman Brothers and their team of writer-producers to be very creatively satisfying. I find that they are smart people who ask all the right questions, and uh, I think I can hardly wait to see this show on TV. I think you guys are going to love wow. what you get. That is a good, that is a very good advertisement coming from you in particular. Um, David, thank you. I think they already know, but just in case, you can find him at David Allen Mack is the Twitter, and just David Mac Pro is the, is, is the website. And uh, again, you will see, uh, you will also see David in another D and D adventure of mine uh, that'll be starting at Gen Con this year at That's the symposium really awesome. this year. So it'll be good times. David, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Greg. It's thank you, thank you. All right, um, yeah, check that out. I'm serious. Like I really like that stuff uh, when we saw this. Okay. Um, that brings me right around to one last person who I managed to find just at the end. And that's this guy. Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> so, Keith. Um, Hi. So, so, Keith DeCanado, who I have already, people know because I've already interviewed Keith before. <laughs> and Keith did the script for this. Um, yes. And for Icarus and uh, is an all-around good guy and also Bronx native and yes. does not live far from me. Um, so, I'm curious, Keith, out of your many, many things that you're working on, is there one that you want to talk up? that's coming soon that you're like, no, this is the most awesome thing at the moment that I'm doing. Um, <laughs> that you're at liberty to talk about. That, that's, that's the, I probably, and, and this is appropriate given that it's you interviewing me, the second book in my urban fantasy series set in the Bronx. Which yes. It doesn't have a title yet. Yes. Um, but I really enjoyed the first book. The reaction to the first book has been really good, and, which was called The Furnace Sealed, which is available now from Wordfire Press. And uh, I've, I've been having fun plotting out what's going to happen in the next one uh, and, and putting Brom through his paces. I'm really looking forward to there being a second book because I've noticed when I'm selling books at conventions, if there's more than one book, people are more interested in investing in. Interesting. Uh, I noticed that. You see, there's my, a life to it somehow. Yeah, with, with my Precinct series, once it started becoming a series when there were several books, sales picked up generally. Yep. Mostly just for the first book. Like, oh, well, I'll try the first one. If I like it, I can buy the next one and right, go right. online and get the next one. Right. Uh, which is great. Uh, so I really want there to be another Brom book, Brom Gold book out because, partly because I love writing. Yeah, you know, I love writing in the Bronx. Being able, I've dug into a whole bunch of interesting Bronx history with these books and uh, I like the characters. I've been having just so much fun with it. And uh, one other thing that I'm hoping to do uh, is... A short story, there's an anthology coming out from Crazy A Press this year called Badass Mobs. Yeah, I was actually just talking to Derek just, about that. Yeah. And I probably will be in it. I'm a stretch goal. Yeah. Um, if, it, if it hits 4,500, then the anthology will happen. If it hits 5,000, it'll happen with the story with me in it. So I'm pushing. So go to will Kickstarter. It, will it be a Brom Gold story at all? It will be set in the, in the same setting. Same setting, okay. Um, the character will be another courser like Brom, okay. a person who hunts supernatural monsters, but, but it will be a female courser who is also a mother and therefore fitting the badass moms. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, super cool. Thank you, uh, Rock. I'm looking forward for to that. I've been having fun coming up. Uh, this this uh, the anthology has inspired me to come up with this new character, who probably will show up in book two also. So okay, very cool. So um, last thing, I tried to get David to uh, you know cop to this too on the t <laughs> on the tie-in front. Yes. Um, is there anything you were at liberty or accidentally not at liberty to accidentally slip and say like uh -huh. not right now. Uh -huh. uh, the, I've got one thing that hasn't been formally announced yet. Okay. Uh, it's a game tie-in. I want to do a sequel to Alien Isolation, which came out last year. Yep. I'm still waiting for my editor to tell me if I can do that or not. How, how was that, by the way? I mean, the, the process of writing that. because it was I mean, great. It was like, yeah. I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. It was... Um, I especially like being able to delve into the backstory of Amanda Ripley and of Ellen Ripley. Yeah. Amanda Ripley being Ellen's daughter. Uh, who's the main character but going into the Ripley family history because that, that that's such a wonderful character and such a wonderful universe yeah uh, so that was my favorite part of that was delving into that particular character and I want to do more with it um, and the problem one of the things that's delaying things of course is Fox being acquired by Disney which has put everything in disarray right so I don't know what the hell's going on I don't think anybody else does either so it eventually ends up with a ride like relating to your books at Disney World I imagine I'd be okay like that's the end result of that <laughs> Um, always a pleasure. Keith did a wonderful job on the script of this. I was actually just, I, I, I often see Keith at this very con. Yes. And so he comes up to me, he's just like, so, I'm like, I, I'm like, I know, it's May, it's almost yes. here. No, so and I'm, and I'm really it. looking forward to finally seeing it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. It was good. Thank you for the link, Rock God. Yes, that is decandido.net, right? Is that the... 
That's the link? Yes. Okay. So that's the link where you can find Keith is really a pros pro. Um, it's a and terrible website, but it's a handy link dump to all the places to find me online. It works. It, it looks exactly like it was designed by somebody who learned HTML in 1996. <laughs> because I learned HTML in 1996. In 1996, yes. And it's not, but it's, it's basically It's like truth in advertising, though, yeah. right? Like, I mean, it's, it's got, you know. It's got links to various and sundry things where you can find me, my blog, my Facebook page, my Twitter feed, my Instagram, all that stuff. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Keith. I appreciate it, as always. All right, folks. Yeah, they are the best. That's right. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate it. All right. So, there we go, Chet. And we come back around as I sneak past. I'm so sorry to bump into you. Hopefully not. And I sneak back around to the front. Oh. All right. There we go. I think I got one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got a nope, eleven, twelve, twelve. I got a sampling of twelve authors. Um, so, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. you. Think I'm looking dapper. It's very nice to be coming. Um, so yeah, so that's that's a little taste of the book fair. Um, and um, it, I think this has been a little busier than last year. It feels like. Um, I am in a different spot. Last year I was all the way down at the other end of, you know, whatever. Um, but this year, a uh, little bit more in the middle of things as I was wandering around sort of talking to people about stuff. So, um, so yeah. So that's, that's what we've got. And this thing runs, I think, for another 25 minutes, something like that. Um, and then we'll see. And Coven, depending on how this goes, um, when I leave, I'll see. I might... Because uh, I imagine I'll be heading back to the, my hotel room, obviously. Um, and depending, I might actually, I could possibly read it to you um, tonight. But if you're already asleep by that point, then I'll just do it tomorrow, maybe after the um, session, after the D and D session. So, which will be in my room. I can click image links, although I don't know what it's going to lead me to. Since I'm streaming from the phone, if I click on it, I'm worried that it's going to go, you know? I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, I don't know for sure. What's up, Dragon Spirit, by the way? Okay. Yeah, part of the problem that I have here, guys, is that the only book that I have left right now is this one. Like, I sold <coughs> I sold books at Boscone, <coughs> so I basically brought, I have CDs, and I have three of those anthologies left, and that's it. Um, because, you know, Forbidden Library is not yet out in print, that's going to be here in four weeks. Icarus and Jelinek are coming out in May. Um, so that's still got to be done, probably late April, early May. Um, and then the Gracia Kickstarter isn't until next week. And then the anthology, I've got another story that's going to be coming out in an anthology from Origins, but that's not published until June. So I just don't have a lot of material right now um, to work with. So, you know. This is early and you've been married six months. Yes, exactly. I do not want to, the, the big red button on my stream would not be a good, uh, not be a good thing. So... One of the things I really like about this program, though, is that the audio is pretty good, comparatively. Like, even with people talking around, you can basically hear, I think, what everyone's saying, um, which is partly because my OnePlus 6 is awesome, but it's also just because I think Streamlabs does a pretty decent job with it. And I don't... Has it been buffering, or has it been okay? Because I'm this is actually off of their Wi-Fi. So, um, when I do the stream, you know, tomorrow I'll be doing it from my hotel room. I think it's a wired connection, but even if it's Wi-Fi, it's going to be in one place, so I won't be walking around. Yeah, I mean, so I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with that, um, I would say, so. It's exactly right, Rock God. It's exactly right. It's one of the things that I was I was kind of frustrated about with, and it's not Alligator Alley's fault. I was just frustrated about the fact that we we weren't quite able to get um, Forbidden Library out because I would have loved to be selling that here. Because um, this is the next the next con that I have is in May, early May at SUNY Broom Con, which is a, which I've never been to, and then Three Rivers Comic Con. Now by Three Rivers Comic Con, I will have Icarus, Jelinek, and I'll have Forbidden Library 
um, plus, you know, any leftover anthologies. I'll probably get a couple more author copies of my academic book. So I'll have more just more stock. But at the moment, I'm kind of blown through all of my stock because I'm in between things. So, you know. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm very happy with my OnePlus 6, and I'm not going to be upgrading from that for some time because I'm very happy with this one. Um, but, yeah, uh, the OnePlus is a good phone. And, you know, this is... I mean, I've streamed now for... I've been live for an hour and a half, almost. Um, and I used up, like, 30% of the battery. It's not bad. Um, so... You know, I, I, in general, I'm, I have no complaints. Uh, and it's good for doing exactly what I'm doing, like walking around, doing live sessions, uh, you know, doing the live broadcast of the D&D, the &D, you know, at symposium, whatever. So it's good for that stuff. I believe it. Someday all of them will get into books, or I have to write um, So, yeah, and it looks like they're starting to wrap up here, if I'm not mistaken. So we will see if that's true, but it looks like it. So how's the foot traffic been? Just I sold two. One of them I had to sell for only ten dollars for shipping because they don't have any shipping. What is it? It normally is fifteen or it's normally twelve. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, this this position where I am is a lot better this year because I'm not right next to the door where the karaoke is going on. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly, Coven. Well, that was the thing, like... I mean, I, when last time I was trying to do the stream and people are like screaming, you know, right, is, American Pie and everything, and dumb. oh my god, so, I mean look, they're having a good time, it's mostly just the echoey off the inside room that creates this like, whoa, so, oh god, oh man. It was... I have a tremendous amount of life insurance uh, because I support, I help support these people. So I have enough that um, it's like four times my salary. And then if I die in an accident, it's like eight times my salary. Yes, it, but they have to make a Well, now I'm getting a little tired. Yeah. After a full day of driving, paneling, running around, uh, and then coming back here, now I'm a little tired, yes. What do I have under the day tomorrow? It's a good question. I will look at the back of my of my Farpoint badge. I have got uh, tomorrow. I have using social media effectively. I don't know anything about social media. All right, Twitch chat. I don't know anything about that. But uh, using it effectively. That's tomorrow at 10 a.m. And then I have an author reading with Peter David, who I showed you a link of before. I showed you before. <laughs> hey, that's uh, Saturday at four. And then, of course, we have D&D uh, &D with IMB at 7. So there we go. Say again, sorry. Are you having more fun than humans should be allowed over here? <laughs> Absolutely. Always. I have to actually. I've never used it the whole day. I mean, it tells me the time, that's it. So, yeah. You had to bust out 15 tiles in the drywall to get to the plumbing? Man, your house, Coven. You've been through the re you've been through the ringer on that house as of late. So not actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think about trying to get a read on attendance of these things, and I'm not a hundred percent sure as of yet. But part of this, you know, part of it too is that you know there, we've had some people here, but it's this doesn't start until 10 p.m which is a little late, honestly, on a Friday, because a lot of people are here and they're just going to conk out because they're going to be super busy on Saturday. So, yeah, <laughs> you pick it up on that, right? Anyway, to finish answering your question, so social media effectively author reading at four, then and not a five-minute reading this time, uh, but an actual regular length reading. 
and then um, on Sunday, I have two panels, How to Speak Good, Er, uh, it's about public speaking and, you know, doing readings and all that kind of thing, and then Setting as Character will be the last panel. Um, but tomorrow during the day, uh, my good friend Mike Underwood is coming up because he is Baltimore native, so he will be stopping by and we're going to grab some lunch and then we're going to do a recording of Speculate. And uh, we've got some big Twitch slash Speculate news coming up, folks. In fact, I have two, not count, count them, not one, but two new uh, campaign adventure type things, which I have almost got locked in for the channel. Um, these are going to be new ongoing campaigns. They will not involve me DMing, but I think you will be pleased with uh, some of the things that you see coming up. So that is coming soon. And um, so yes, I am very, very pleased about it. And the channel continues to grow with those offerings, which is great because, you know, I love that stuff. Oh, speaking of that, Shadow, how are you feeling? And um, are we rescheduling for you for Wednesday? No Hearts of Woolen return yet, but Hearts of Woolen is on the docket. I want Hearts of Woolen back. That's just a matter of getting Lowell Francis to be able to do it. The players all want to play, um, but it's just a matter of getting him on board. It's not buddies with lasers. Sadly not. I don't know how you do 12 minutes. But yeah, Shattered, are you good? How are you feeling for uh, Wednesday? And uh, uh, if not this Wednesday, I don't know if you had it even scheduled or, um, you know, are you on track for soon thereby? It was, it was great, Kevin, yeah. Again, the players loved it. It was just a matter of getting the GM, you know, to, to commit because he's very busy. Planning for Wednesday? Okay, good. Yes, we should be on Wednesday. Okay, good. All right, we need our Dragon of Ice Bar Peak. I've been talking to you guys up. I'm like, hey, the rising stars of the uh, of the uh, ARF community, right? Of the ARF tabletop community. So, but yeah, no, I'm really excited about it. I mean, if you think about all of the stuff that, that we've got going on in the channel, super happy with how IMB is going, super happy with Adventures Middle Earth, super happy with Esper Genesis, um, super happy with D&D with GOG. Um, and I'm really happy with Emberwind and Dragon of Ice Bar Peak, and as I say, another couple coming down the line too, coming down the pike. So, very excited about where we are tabletop wise. I'm super excited about the game, video game side of things too, because my two PC setup, I got the, I fixed the clicking, so the clicking is fixed, and I'm super pumped. Um, so for that, because it's not clicking anymore, so I've got that fixed. So I feel good about it. We just need to make sure we. I just need to make sure we keep working on numbers and getting more and more people over here and involved. So yeah. Ah, Lone Wolf. It is Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. It is on Wednesday nights, uh, twice a month. Um, I'll come back to that Dragon Spear. Uh, twice a month, and it is with Shadowed Mage as the DM, and it has Rock God, Echo Alpha X5, Kilobyte, and Hoodie uh, playing, and they did a great job. I think they're already two episodes in, so this will be the third episode. And um, yeah, I've had a chance to watch and lurk, and I love it. I'm, I'm really, you know, enjoying seeing some of the extra content. As far as what was clicking, um, I was getting this weird, like, you know, Dragon, when I when I stream with um, with the uh, with my capture card and I'm capturing like the Wii U or whatever, like this kind of like a <laughs> type of thing um, going on, and I couldn't figure out what it was doing, and I figured it out with Kilgore and I. It had something to do with down downscaling, so I fixed it so that that no longer is there. So now it's just smooth as silk, which means for my stuff like The Witcher for, you know, Cures of Might and Magic, not that that's a big deal anyway, but for any of the sort of newer games that I'm playing, um, the, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great, like, it's it's in good shape. And for um, Operencia, too, uh, all of that is gonna be good with the two PC setup, so, it's good stuff. Yeah, Hoodie is a good dude. I actually agree with you. He, he, I was impressed with him. I, I already knew about you folks, but I was impressed with how he played. He played really well. And I think he gave, didn't Shadow, didn't he do the overlay too? Didn't Hoodie do the overlay that you're using for, uh, for that? I mean, I'm too I actually can't tell you the number of Arthurian books that are on the Yeah, he is. And I mean, I'll, you know, I'm hoping he did the Austin New Overlay. I'm hoping that we can get an intro video for you guys eventually also. Um, but frankly, uh, since Kilobyte is the one who does my videos, I think I want you guys to prevail on Kilobyte to do it. I, I you know, 
I feel like that's one that you should just do for free because it's awesome and it's him. I'm joking, mostly. Uh, I'm <laughs> mostly joking. Um, but yeah, I want to try to do at some point, um, I don't know when an intro video, it is up on my YouTube channel now. I do have on my YouTube channel my own playlist for Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. So if you go up there, you'll see, you'll see it there. So yeah. Right. It sounds like people are starting to pack up. So... I think I might do this. Sorry about that. I think I might do the same thing. Although I do find it funny that between our two engineer husbands, no. mine does not like it when I change things to become more efficient because he has the muscle memory. Therefore, the muscle memory is more efficient than learning new potentially faster routes. I want to live in this bizarre world where it's full of engineers and they're just content. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try to pack you folks up with me here. <laughs> wow, Kevin. Wow. No, no, it's experienced man speak for the time has come. The walrus said. That's what it's actually for. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, Shadow, it's true. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you to the room exactly. I'm taking a bunch of people to my room, filming at 11. Um, <laughs> like, Art's taking us to his room. <laughs> I find out worse. Um, there should be Rock God. Uh, Kilobyte actually is the one to talk to about that. Um, because, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that would be a good idea uh, to include him for sure. Um, I will bring you folks with me, and Coven, um, I know, very promiscuous. Coven, if you are willing to stick around, Coven, for a few minutes, as we walk back to my room, um, then I will read you the new story, because uh, I'm, I hope you like it, I'm, I, I'm happy on it, I'm happy with it. And then the next one up is Echo, the next one after that is the short story. Uh, for the Origins Anthology, and the next one after that is revising my middle grade manuscript, which I had an excellent conversation, several of them actually, with Carlos and um, Carlos Hernandez, and it, he had great things to say. I've also had other beta readers who have talked to me about it, so I'm excited about it. I want to get that revised by early June, so yeah. All right, let me go grab my Jelinek thing. I love that. Did you, did you picture this a lightning strike on a blown vacuum thing? I think an old far side person. I am afraid of those. Not just because the house is on the but yeah, I'm afraid of like we have cats and sometimes they'll you know throw up and then does the does the cat force then go all over the house? I would be afraid of that. So all I really have to do is get my hand is suggested I'm gonna work I'm gonna say it's an option. Uh oh. Sorry, let me uh I can move my stuff clear. Sorry, I can move my stuff clear. 
I mean, it's mostly, it's mostly Mary disappearing and just leaving her stuff left him out. Here we go. Does that help? Is it? Yeah, we didn't have a lot of room to maneuver. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Echo is getting a story. Uh, sorry, a uh, character background. That's what I meant. That's what I mean, Rock God. Right. Oh my gosh. You guys hear this? This guy's going for it. Wow. Not bad, actually. That's not easy to do. All right. Purely for lore reasons. Okay, let's double check, make sure. Good, good, good. All right. All right, we got everything. Okay, let's go, chat. I'm going to bring you through the secret passageways. There we go. I'll put you forward. So here we go. All right, so we got that. Okay, so now we walk over here and over and up. Also a little bit hungry. I think I may grab, I might grab like a snack at a vending machine. I had a Caesar salad this evening, which was fine. It was not bad. So the hallway where most of the con stuff is happening is right down here. That's where all like the different conference rooms are. A sandwich, yeah. I do like sandwiches. All right, so here we go. This is also where I got my pocket watch that I'm actually wearing. It was at the dealer's room here, but the dealer's room is closed. So now we're gonna go up here. A Caesar salad vending machine. No, there's not, as far as I know, at least here, a Caesar salad vending machine, although it's a promising idea. All right, now, one thing to keep in mind, Chad, is that I am like, on the other end of the universe, basically from this area, um, so where I am is is not close. So here you go. There's the currently shut down for the night, and more over here. Over here we have the bootleg DVDs, which I still don't understand how they're legal and we're selling them, but we're selling them whatever. Got the DC Anime Club. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Just, I'm waiting on the vending machine. I guess. Although I don't entirely know what you mean, little wolf. Sure. Uh, well, 
Oh, that was so much fun. There we go. champions, people. No, I'm talking to my Twitch channel. <laughs> it's on a live stream. I talk to myself too, but you know, no one knows that. <laughs> It's a good thing I wasn't talking to myself. Talking to my Twitch chat, and he's like, "Oh, clearly having no idea whatsoever." All right, here we are. Here's my room. All right, here's my room. Okay, I think I might be back now. Am I back? Okay, see you, Rogan. Am I back? Can people hear me? Am I back? Hello, hello, check one, check two. Okay, I'm good now. Okay, good, good, good. So, all right, so I'm back in my room. So, I don't, I don't know if you guys heard this, but when I was getting my um, the Reese's peanut butter cups from the vending machine, and I was talking to you, the guy said, this guy was like, he turns to me, he's like, do you always talk to yourself? I'm like... Um, I'm like, so I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm just talking to Twitch chat. And clearly the guy has no idea what I'm talking about. He's like, Twitch chat? Like, I could have said I'm talking to blah, 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 blah. He has no idea what I'm talking about. But I'm just like, what if I was talking to myself? Yeah, exactly. This is the hotel with lots of animal porches. Exactly nonstop. What if I was talking to myself? Wouldn't that be rude to be like, do you always talk to yourself? Like, wouldn't, <laughs> I'm just kind of like, what? Like, I mean, obviously, it doesn't bother me since I was talking to someone. So I'm like, yeah, I just talked to myself when no one knows, notices that I'm doing it. And he's like, <laughs> it's just kind of like, okay, whatever you say, guy. Oh, my goodness. That was funny. All right. So let me get the laptop so I can read Coven Guy's story. So give me one second. Yeah, they all started saying, I know a guy. It's true. Okay, so let me fire this up. It's like live action YouTube. Uh, I do have Discord on the laptop. Yes, yes, I do. I do indeed have Discord on the laptop. Right, we're going to put this down here. Okay, cool, cool. Um, all right, so I am going to That's wrong. Oh no, it's right. I got it right. Yay. Okay. Oh, the home repair. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so now can now guys, can you can everybody hear me as I'm sitting I'm lying on my bed right now looking at um, my laptop where I have the story? Can everyone hear me okay? even like as I'm talking like this. Yes? Okay. All right, so this is the story um, that I wrote uh, for uh, Coven Guy. This is Coven Guy's Patreon reward. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that. Okay, so here we go. Um, so this is Coven Guy's reward. Um, that for the Patreon. And those of you who played um, with him 
who was playing with you in the D and D session, Coven, when you played with me? It was it was you and who else? I think it was Rock God. It might have been Rock God and Echo. Was it who else was playing with you in the session where this character came about? What's up, Mayor North? I don't remember who it was. Um, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But if those of you who might remember, it was Shadow and Wenchkin. Yeah, you were there. That's right. Shadow was there. Wenchkin was there. Coven Guy. And it might have been Echo. Yeah, with the hags and everything. Yes. Okay, so this character is Broccoli Oakenhammer, a dwarven druid. And uh, this character was noticeable for... You were there, Mayor North? Three witches, that's right, Lone Wolf. And this character is notable um, because this character uh, actually was... Um, uh, this character like kept missing things, like basically, as he said, like flailing wildly. So the whole thing that we made about it was this idea that, that he was basically a character that you know, was into the druid thing and not so much into the fighting thing. And so that was the sort of thing I was given as an idea, as a concept, and so that's what I went with. So, Broccoli Oakenhammer Dwarven Druid. <clears throat> Here we go. And for those of you who don't know what this is, this is for a Patreon reward. When you support my Patreon at the $10 level, the first time you support it, you get an either an epic poem written about you or a character background. So any character system, any game system, you just send me the major sort of statistics and characteristics of the character that you want, like basically just what class, race, etc. And then I will make a backstory for them, basically. So an origin story. I'm going to be doing this for Echo's character, Shakunis, and now I'm doing this for Coven Guy. So, Coven, you ready? Are you set, sir? Okay. Broccoli Oakenhammer, Dwarven Druid. The rod thumped him in the back, and Broccoli stumbled forward a few paces, just able to catch himself before falling. Too slow, a gruff voice said from behind him, and Broccoli swung around with his training stick held high to block the next attack. First low, then high, take out the head and the body dies. But he remembered the other line of the mantra even as the gruff voice was saying it. Don't assume, don't be sure, Uncertain act, don't take the lure. The next strike went not high, but directly to his knees, causing his legs to buckle and him to pitch forward awkwardly onto his face. He closed his eyes and groaned, but not loudly enough to drown out a long, drawn-out sigh. Rolling himself onto his back, which throbbed painfully in response, Broccoli opened his eyes slowly to reveal an all-too-common sight. A tall dwarf, dark beard and hair flecked with silver, staring down at him with an expression of ill-concealed disappointment before turning and walking away. Just another failed afternoon training session. Just another chance to let his father down. Broccoli had never thought it was a good idea for Arkin Oakenhammer to take over his training. His father had been a great warrior for decades, and his skills in training other fighters were so legendary that even rival clans grudgingly acknowledged him as the greatest living teacher of the ancient martial traditions. But he was not a miracle worker, at least not when the miracle involved teaching someone like Broccoli how to be vaguely competent in combat. For although he was clearly his father's son in appearance, fairly tall, a thick black beard, and eyebrows setting off hazel eyes, which in turn flanked a long, slightly crooked nose, when it came to proficiency with weapons, or even interest in using them, he might as well be related to a halfling cook as a dwarven warrior. At times, after another lecture or eye-roll or disappointed sigh, Broccoli toyed with the possibility of asking Arkin whether his mother, who had passed away right after Broccoli was born, really was a halfling. It would have explained a lot. All except his height, his beard, his... No, he was definitely a dwarf through and through, just not a successful one. Broccoli stood, wincing slightly, and slowly made his way to the table at the side of the training ring where Arkin was gathering together the sticks and rods used for the session. He stood for several silent minutes, breathing in the mountain air as he watched his father bundle the symbols of his failure together, before venturing a quiet, I'm sorry, father. Arkin snorted. I'm sure. I am, Broccoli insisted, stung. I misremembered the mantra you taught me, and I should have read your attack instead of... Arkin waved impatiently, still focused on the sticks in front of him. None of it matters, Broccoli. Broccoli blinked. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. 
It doesn't matter whether you remembered the mantra or read my attack. But, but, but it's part of the training, and I... Yes, Arkin said, pulling the rope around the sticks a bit tighter than was probably necessary. It's part of the training, and you haven't gotten any closer to being able to do your training in months. Your forms are sloppy, your accuracy ridiculous, your responsiveness slow. I'm still learning. We're all learning, Broccoli. The question is whether you can learn before Mount Calyx itself falls. And frankly, given how long it took you even to pick up your weapons in the first place, Arkin went on, giving the rope around the bundle one last yank, I'd say that's pretty unlikely. That's not fair, Broccoli said, feeling his face growing hot. I'm trying. You're not, Arkin said, dropping the bundle onto the table with a bang and turning to face his son, dark eyes flashing. You're not trying. You don't want to do this. And when I think about what your mother would have felt if she knew her only son was more interested in... He waved at the surrounding trees and bushes, in picking berries and cutting leaves and the trick things which honor the dwarves and the Oakenhammers, I... Broccoli dropped his own stick onto the ground and drew himself up to face Arkin, fists clenched and heart pounding. You're always disappointed in me, father, and all you've ever told me about mother is how she would have been disappointed in me, too. He saw Arkin's expression shift grow softer, but he was already too far gone in years of pent-up rage as he charged on. And I'll tell you this, father, after a lifetime with you, if that's really how she would have felt about me, it's better that she's dead and gone. He whirled from the anguish in Arkin's gaze and stormed away, out of the training ring and into the trees beyond. The truth, of course, was that his father was right. Dwarves were meant to mine deep, carve cunningly, and produce great works of stone and earth, and then fight to keep them and Broccoli admired the work of his dwarven forebears, the permanence, the stability of it all. Humans build for themselves, went the old dwarven saying. Dwarves build for their distant descendants. But Broccoli himself had never really cared about those things. Since he was old enough for memory, he had loved the living world of trees and bush and grass, the forests and the towering wooden guardians which created them, root by root to hold the earth and leaf by leaf to reach for the sky. Here, among the scents of rich loam and damp moss, in the subtle green light of the leaf-filtered sunlight from somewhere far above, was where Broccoli felt truly at home. He could still remember the first time he had found a sprig of pineberry, almost never seen this far north. The excitement he felt as he planted it near the outskirts of this very forest. The joy he felt coming back year after year to see it find purchase in the soil and grow fast and strong, a new protector at the mountain's edge. It's all a strange, bizarre joke, Broccoli thought as he bent down to look at a holly-leaf bush growing near a strong elm, its delicate red berries clustered in threes around dark green leaves. He should have been an elf in Razorwood far from here, or a woodsman in the royal forest on the edge of the king's dominion. Instead, he was a dwarf of Mount Calyx, a terrible fighter and a constant failure. Suddenly he heard a shout from beyond the tree line, and his heart skipped a beat. He knew the voice well, though he had never heard it sound like this. It was Arkin, and he was in pain. Broccoli rose and sprinted off in the direction from which he had come, heart pounding in time with his steps, and emerged after a minute into the bright northern sun. He slid to a stop and peered around him, blinking as his eyes adjusted to the brilliant light. There was the training ring, there was the table, and... No. One of the legs of the heavy stone table had crumbled, and the table had fallen over. There, his legs pinned underneath one of the table's ends, was Arkin Oakenhammer, eyes closed and breathing shallow. Broccoli ran to his father's side, and as he saw his father's face pale and drawn in shock, his heart skipped again. He pulled at the edge of the table, but it would take five or six strong dwarves to lift it free, and the training ring was at least twenty minutes at full run from the outer guard post. By the time he could get there, get some other dwarves in return, Arkin would be long gone. My fault, he thought, resisting the urge to pound the table in rage and frustration. If I hadn't run, if I had seen it falling, been able to warn him, if I were a real dwarf with more knowledge of stone than tree. Tree, he suddenly thought. And then another thought came to him. The pine berry growing fast and strong. The words he had whispered to it. He closed his eyes and began to whisper the words again, struggling to keep his voice soft and low against the urgency of the moment. Calestus, he intoned slowly. Elarish Calestus, Elarish Calestus Carencia. 
On he went, building word on word, sentences growing and stretching and searching like roots in soil, slow and sure and true. Suddenly he heard a crack and a gasp and his eyes flicked open. His father was staring at him. No, not at him. He was staring at something above him, and suddenly Broccoli was aware that the light around them was now muted, dimmer, and shaded green. The end of the stone table was lifted high in the air, upheld by a thick, star strong root, and Arkin Oakenhammer was free. His leg was twisted underneath him at an unnatural angle, and his face still looked pale. But as Broccoli turned, he saw what his father was looking at. A strong, tall tree, a mighty pine, its needles and branches swaying gently in the breeze far overhead, grown in the space of a minute to its full glory. Broccoli! His father gasped, but not simply in pain. Broccoli, you... you did this? Broccoli looked back at him and nodded mutely. I... Arkin fell silent. I didn't know, he finally said after a long pause. Your mother, she... He sighed, his expression distant. She loved the forest as much as you. The trees, the leaves, the bushes... I never understood. When she passed away, she told me. She said there was power there in the forests of the world. That you would know that power, too. That I should... But I couldn't. I couldn't think of the forest without thinking of her, and... Arkin sighed again. I am a fool. An old and stubborn and rock-brained fool. She always knew that, but somehow loved me anyway. He looked back at his son. Broccoli, you have what she had, and it's time to embrace it. You are a druid of the forest, son. A dwarf and a druid. And Broccoli Oakenhammer bathed in the green light of the tall and living pine which swayed above him. Smiled. The End so, there you go, man. Oh, well, that's that's high praise. Thank you. I hope you liked it. Um, so there is Broccoli Oakenhammer, the origin story for the uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> thank you, Lone Wolf. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. So there you go, man. Um, so it was fun doing that one. It was fun trying to get a sense of what was going to make Broccoli tick. Um, and I like the idea of the father being in. Actually, Shadowed Mage was one of the first one of these I ever did, and his was also about parents. So, you did Broccoli Proud, good, I'm glad. It was funny, too, because I, I was, when I was doing it, I didn't want to make him into some complete incompetent clown. Like, I was like, no, 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 he's a druid, like, he's a legit druid, you know? Um, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, so. And it was, by the way, uh, it was A-R-C-A-N is how it's spelled, Shadowed. Um, it's pronounced Arkin, so a hard C, but... Um, but yeah, so, so, all right, folks, well, you had a chance to see the book fair, you had a chance to meet some authors, and you had a chance to hear a story, so, there you go, um, you put that pick in, pick in general, all right, um, let me see, let me connect to it, no, C-A-N, A-R-C-A-N, all right, I'm connecting my laptop right now, and then I'll check what Discord says, yeah, there you go. An oaken hammer is pretty obvious. All right, that connects that. R can. Exactly. Ah, oh, thank you, Lone Wolf. Listen. I, I really appreciate, you know, you are, you are always have a very positive outlook, Lone Wolf, which I really appreciate. So, so thank you um, for doing that, because that, that definitely, that's, that's what we're, you know, we live for people feeling like they're getting something positive out of what we do. So, um, so thank you. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let me fire up quickly the Discord just so I can see this before I wrap up for the evening. And again, I'll be back Saturday for D&D &D with INB. Um, and this is my last con until May. So after this, it'll be pretty straight ahead. May is going to be busy because May, I've got um, the conference at the beginning, SUNY BroomCon. Then I've got Three Rivers Comic Con. And in the middle of that, I've got ARVCon. So we got a lot of that stuff going on. It's going to be 
crazy go nuts. Joven Bookbridge. I, you know, I have to say, Shadowed, honestly, of all the ones that I've done, I'm proudest of the end of that story. The end of that story is one of the proudest I've been of, like, one of these character backgrounds. Because it, because it was basically very Rutger Hauer, um, what's his name, Roy Batty in Blade Runner-ish. You know, like, you won't believe what I've seen. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe, you know? like <laughs> So that's part of it. Um, okay, let me see. So I got Discord open now. You put this in general. Uh, you're after after my own heart, Lone Wolf. After my own heart. Okay, let's see. Wait, caution! Do not poke the deep ones. That can't be it. I think I was looking at Rom ears. There we go. Here we go. Pictures loading, 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 loading. Oh, man. So you got some work to do. You have got some work to do on that plumbing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Although the pipes don't look to be in awful shape, actually. So it's not too bad, comparatively. So anyway. Um, all right, folks. So I got to, uh, I got to uh, head off now. Uh, Coven, I will mail this to you. If I don't, please remind me, and I'll send this to you. It may not be today, but I'll try to do it tomorrow. Um, I will send you the story, and then that will be complete. And then I'm going to do Echoes, send that off to him, and then I have my short story to do for my anthology, and then I have to revise Winnie and Wormwood. So that's what I got going on. But that is going to do it for me for this evening. I hope you folks enjoyed uh, this little stream live from Farpoint, the book fair. Um, and now I'm going to go, you know, with this horse thing. I'm going to try not to be godfather freaked out by that. Um, but I'm going to head off uh, panel tomorrow and then reading tomorrow. And then I've got uh, IMB in the evening at 7 p.m., so it should be in the normal time. So I will see all of you lovely people there soon. If you haven't already, don't forget to follow the channel. Check out the YouTube, exclamation point R of tube, Twitter, exclamation point R of tweets, Discord, exclamation point R of cord. Um, please spread the word about the channel. Check it out at rvanellaron.com. Financially, exclamation point Arv Treon is the Patreon. Again, that is if you like that story and you'd like to have something like that written for you, you can support the Patreon at that level and then uh, you can get such a story. Exclamation point Arv Shop is my merchandise shop, which Shadowed was kind enough to put up there. And of course, the sub button right above that. Uh, ah, clever, clever, clever. I didn't want to be saddled with your humor today, Coven. Winning. Anyway. Um, but uh, yes, uh, so. Um, but, uh, and then of course we've got the shop, exclamation point R of shop, and the sub button right above that video window. Thank you for the resub, Coven, which I think I saw you do today. So, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, being awesome as always. I will see you tomorrow, uh, live from the road with the power of our box two with some, uh, D&D with Infinity and Beyond Curse Strad. Otherwise, wish me luck on panels and readings tomorrow, and I will see all of you lovely folks soon. Bye for now, all.